Alcoholics, what is up? It's your boy B Wiz Gone Fishing. We're back at it with another episode. It is Friday. It is time check 8:43. Um, we're out here in Missouri City. We're at Buffalo Run Park. Um, this is probably a force. I'm not gonna lie. As you guys know, if you're in Texas area, it is hot, hot, hot. The water temp already is at 89 degrees. Temperatures today is gonna to be around 101. So it's gonna be a hot one. So what I'm gonna to do today is, I just wanted to get out of the house. I had an easy day today with work. Um, I wanna to put together some warm water, warm weather patterns, just to practice. Um, and of course, get the line tight. So we're gonna to see. Today is gonna to be mostly deep water fishing. Um, I plan to be 15 to 20 feet, maybe around 10. We'll see what's going on this morning. Um, we're gonna talk about our baits today. We're gonna to talk about technique, what I like to use, what baits I like to use in certain situations. I need to get better at fishing deep, so here we go. Let's get the fishing. We're going to go over to a spot first where I usually get bit. Um, I've been here a handful of times, but this little spot over here usually does pretty good for me. So we're gonna go check that out first to see if we can get on the board early. Put the shades on. We're gonna start off nothing fancy. Uh, starting off, so I'm gonna throw a crawl first. Texas rigged flipping hook um, to start off right here at this spot over here tucked away in this corner we'll see who is home all right so now we go to about eight feet so straight ahead there's a lot of structure so what I'm gonna do is throw this crack and crawl right out there let's see if we can get the morning started look I didn't want to go to a big lake dry far away in this in the heat the fish are already stubborn enough as it is so we're just gonna drift this bank here first like I said, I've had success here throwing Texas rigged worms and crawls right here first. Um, so let's talk about what I'm using. Um, like I said, this is a Texas rig. I got a 3 16th ounce weight, a three aught trocar flipping hook with 17 pound fluoro. Um, my rod of choice is my Ardent flip stick um, for my jigs. Um, it's a 7.4 medium heavy, and I have it paired on my 7.2 gear ratio Shimano SLX. One of my favorite setups. Shout out to Arnett Rods for the sponsor. Um, they do make good rods. It's the Denny Browers Pro Series rod. Really good action, really good tip, but also really good backbones to pull in those fish when they're in deep cover or wrapped around limbs and trees. And, no nibbles quite yet. I'm not tracking any fish right now either. No, I did not qualify. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, first year fishing kayak series. A lot of fun. Um, my team series. We're almost done with that as well. Tournament. Uh, the championship is on the Angelina River. Hopefully we'll get into that. We actually just missed a cut for the championship. Me and my boy Brox Um, It was a tough year on us. We missed a couple of tournaments just from whether it be boat issues or one of us not feeling well. So we did not get the points we needed. That's okay, it happens. We will be back though. First we had the first tug. This is a um, green pumpkin bait. Um, like I said, it's a crawl, crawl pattern, and I usually get bit here on this wall, so 
I just kind of wanted to get a quick bite, possibly in the morning here, before we get started. Temp is 89 degrees. I guess we'll talk about the uh, the rods I have rigged up real quick. I'll go in detail about each one once I start throwing it. But like I said, right here we got a Texas rig, nothing special. Always have to have this in the boat. Fishing Texas rig, you can fish it with a worm, you can fish it with a craw, curl tail worm, grub, Ned rig, just about anything. This is it right here. Like I said, it's the green pumpkin, uh, crack and crawl, trocar flipping hook. Got your weight, of course, a bobber stop, Texas rig. Make sure it's weedless. But yeah, that's it. Um, we also have the shaky head tied on. Uh, I got a shaky head on my spinning setup. I um, also have a deep diving jerk bait, deep diving crankbait. I do have a Carolina rig tied on for when we go deep. And I'm missing one of those. Uh, a shallow crank, which I'm gonna use here in a second. That goes three to five feet. And then I have a Tokyo rig. Um, I bought the Tokyo rig out because I figured it's a presentation probably people are not throwing out here. But uh, it's gonna allow the bait to sit um, horizontal. So we'll talk about that as well. No nibbles yet. There's some bait there. Definitely some bait in the area. Another thing with it being so hot, the fish could be anywhere. It's been a hundred degrees all week, every day. The water temperature so far is 88, 89 degrees. Um, so there's not a whole lot of cover out here. You, know, you gotta go find it. So that's the plan today. Um, I really wanna do that just to kind of learn my graphs, um, understanding what I'm looking at, what I'm feeling at the bottom. I want those two things to correlate together. So that's the idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish this entire bank, but I'm gonna start at the back and work my way back down since the wind is blowing in this direction. We're going into the wind. So, so I'm, like I said, I'm gonna throw the Tokyo rig. Let me go ahead and get that ready right now. And I'm throwing this on my ducket rod, the Ghost. Seven foot three, medium heavy. Um, this is also has a Shimano reel on it, my Shimano DC. Um, so this is a Tokyo rig. Um, you've got a wire leader, okay? I got two weights, and I put a glass bead in the center so that when I like, shake it, it makes that clicking sound. And it's gonna allow that bait to lay horizontal, okay? So I'm gonna start off with a good old Cinco for that first. You know what? I did make some Cinco's. If you go check out my Instagram page, Be Wisconsin Fishing, you'll see the latest color I made. It's a color shift. This is it right here. We're gonna try that out first. As you can see, it's a clear bag. I made this, ain't no, it's not branded like Guggen or it's not branded like Berkeley. Clear bag. Well, maybe I should get some logos for my baits. I do have a logo, so might as well put my own sticker on my own baits, right? And we're just going to Texas rig this. This is a extra wide gap three out hook. So we're going to go right in the top, throw it all the way to the end of the shank, pull that around like so, and then we're going to go ahead and make this weedless because we do have some trees out here that I want to fish, some stumps and stuff like that, and I do not want to get hung up. And I'm gonna just pinch that, cover that hook edge. So there we go. That's how it's gonna sit on the bottom. 
and I'm gonna hop it along. Took you read. All right, guys, we are back. We had a little mishap with the tree. We got hung up, lost the Tokyo rig, but I tied another Tokyo rig on. And like I said, I wanted to try this new six cents bait. This is the six cents ledge worm. Um, and we're gonna give this a try and see how we do. We'll see if they like this big meal of a worm here. Fish are still there, man. Hummingbird is definitely got them going. The Garmin's got them going. I guess I'll answer that question. Um, so, my right side, I have the Hummingbird Helix 7. And on my left side, I got the Garmin Equimap. Also a 7-inch monitor. Well, Brent, why do you have two monitors? Well, Brent, why do you have a Hummingbird and a Garmin? Let's break it down. Hummingbird, I love Hummingbird. If I sat there and said, Brent, like what monitor you like the most? Hummingbird. Things so visual, you can definitely see what things are. I just love how it looks. It's easy to use. You're very user friendly. Um, plus, I'm going to eventually put 360 so that I can see all the way around the boat. Um, after doing some research and fishing with my buddy, um, he has 360 on his boat, and I mean, it just works. Um, you can see everything. You can see the structure. You can make it makes sense. Um, so that's why I have a hummingbird on my right. Plus, I love hummingbirds side scan. Hands down, the best um, out there in my opinion. I have a Garmin because I'm going to use my Garmin active live target sonar. Um, so I'm going to be using that um, on that side. There's some activity going on over here. But that's why I have two different ones. Um, yes, Hummingbird has a live already. Um, and honestly, now that I'm, I'm really debating, because <laughs> I, I do love Hummingbird, guys. Um, sorry, there's a guy mowing. But um, I do love Hummingbird. Um, and Hummingbird just came up with that target locking system with the live. It's pretty sweet. I was gonna put the Garmin uh, live system on this side, and I'm really debating if I really want, want to do that or not. Garmin or Hummingbird. You guys comment down below, what do you think? Should I go with the Garmin live setup or should I go with the Hummingbird live setup? Um, I'm for sure putting 360 on my Hummingbird on, on one side. If I do both Hummingbirds and one Hummingbird is gonna be for 360 and side scan, the other one will be strictly for use of live action just haven't quite decided what that's going to be yet i need to hurry up and make a choice though for sure the next upgrade for the boat is up front um i'm going to put the trolling motor on the front spot locking troll motor um that's coming soon i should have been had it already should have been done it um but you know i was going over different things in my head and is that what I really wanted? But right now, it's no wind going right now. And I'm not moving, which is good. But if there was wind blowing, then I'd be worrying about my boat position constantly and putting myself right back and forth in the right position. And that's that's really annoying, <laughs> to say the least. When you're trying to fish a certain spot and you're trying to stay locked in, um, and I was like, well, man, what about a torpedo? You know, that can get me from spot to spot. It's gonna make me fast. You know, I'm just like, uh, I like that idea, but I can't spot lock myself. And if I'm going to be a tournament angler, I just feel like you got to be able to fish offshore and stay on and stay on point. And I just when it, when it's wind and you're in a piece of plastic and even if it's 10 miles an hour, you're moving, you're going to be moving. And so I just don't like that. And I definitely just. I'm definitely going to have uh, the choice of putting the bow, mo bow mounted um, trolling motor on the front, the XI3 trolling motor. So, coming soon. I don't have to worry about it. I can just use my hand, put myself in position. I see some structure that I want. I can stay on point, fish that, fish that structure. I can put it on super slow and have it just work me all the way down the bank. 
I don't have to worry about steering anything. Psh, come on, man. Done deal. Done deal. It must not be bass, man. I don't know. All right, we're gonna make a couple casts up the way with the Tokyo rig. I might throw my, my crankbait through there. I don't know, it's just gonna be a lot of wood and I don't wanna get hung up, but I also could possibly get a reaction strike out of it. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We will make sure my bait looks good, nice and straight. Okay. Good. All right, we gotta have the fish on up in there, man. Yep. Oh no. Maybe it was just my bait. My, I think my tungsten was playing with me. I'm being a little antsy because I want my first one. Come on, fish. Me a little love. Hey guys, um, the last lure that we haven't talked about our technique is the old school. There it is. You know what that means. Ball and chain Carolina rig. So what I got right here is I got a one ounce tungsten. We got some beads for some noise. Tie that on to a swivel. I like using my Carolina uh, rigs with braid just so I can feel the bottom structure a little bit better. Understanding if it's a soft bottom, hard bottom. So I like using braid. Tie that to a 12 pound or 15 pound fluorocarbon leader uh, with an extra wide gap. And I have a black and blue crawl on the top of that. God, dog, look at the bait. Look at the bait. Like, I don't understand why we're not catching no fish, man. It's massive. <sighs> All right, but yeah, we got the old ball and chain technique out. Um, I've had some good success with this. What's going to happen is, guys, this uh, this weight is going to be on the bottom, and it's going to slow sink this, uh, this crawl. And, and I'm just going to move it slow. See if I feel any structure. We want to keep that in mind. If we can find structure, especially hard structure, then that's good. Um, oh, rod. Sorry. We got the seven foot three uh, medium heavy. We got the Ducket Silverado rod for that one. Um, throwing this on the Albu Garcia Silver Max. This is actually my second bait casting reel. Um, held up really well. Held up really well. <laughs> Love it, and it casts like a dream. Water still 90 degrees. Let's get back to the deeper water here. Let me... the bait that we saw earlier there's fish below the bait so I'll put my rod down real quick so you guys can see so look at that bait line boom there it is right there there's the bait looks like there's some fish under it possibly feeding I mean my goodness it's so long <laughs> their shed right there guys it's still going look at that <laughs> nice long cast let that weight get to the bottom. You can put any bait you want on a Carolina rig, guys. Um, you, can, you can put a worm, you can put a 
big worm. You could put creature bait. You can put a crawl like I have. You could do curl tail worm. A lot of people like throwing flukes on there. Um, just think again, it's gotta figure out what pattern the fish want, where the fish are hidden. Um, guys even like to throw the brush hog out there on, on the Carolina rig. Think about this Carolina rig, man. You gotta be patient. You wanna keep bottom contact. Very, very important. Just keep bottom contact. I'm throwing the Carolina rig. All right, I gotta come up with a game plan, man. Um, maybe I go back over there and fish my spot. I'm desperate for a tug. We're going back to my spot where we started. Um, like I said, I like that spot because I know I've caught fish over there before. Really, every time I've came here. Hmm. All right, let's just open the Champions Club box right now. Let's take a break. grab my box major league champion club uh, box um, this is just like any of your mystery tackle box your Guggen box your Carl's Bay and tackle mystery box every month $25 comes directly to your mail and you get a new selection of baits that you get to try um, I am somewhat of a little tackle junkie so it's always cool to kind of see what we get here we go champion club box here's what we got guys First up, we have Big Bite Baits. Looks like a summer crawl type of allure. Yep, looks like a little creature bait, summer crawl style. Boom, we got that. Ooh, for our swim baits, we got a J-Wheel swim bait head. Heard those are pretty good heads by Buckeye Lures. And Duckett gave us some uh, Tennessee Shad 5-inch swim baits. Not bad at all. Need an A-rig for that. <laughs> 13 fishing. We got a Jabber Jaw. I have some Jabber Jaws in the collection. Uh, this is the Jabber Jaw. What color is this? Day Old Guac. <laughs> That's a funny color. Day Old Guac. Cool. The Jabber Jaw is kind of cool. The uh, It's not your typical uh, crankbait. It's a metal uh, crankbait head and it wibbles side to side. And we have a huge Chris Lane series. Big mistake. This is a topwater. Looks like a prop bait. Nice, Chris. And he's, I didn't know he was with River to Sea. Okay, cool. So that's it, man. We got a topwater. We got a crankbait. We got a creature bait. And we got some swim bait jig heads and some swim baits for the month of July, Champions Club Major League Fishing. You guys give them a, give them a look. All right, let's get back to fishing. Keep that going. Um, I do wanna make some changes real quick, so give me one second, guys, and let me make those changes and we'll get back to you. I just don't understand. I really don't, man. It's actually really frustrating because it's like, you know, <laughs> you see them, they're right there with, you're in fishing where you should be.
Christian. I think I am calling it quits. Throwing in the white flag, man. Some days it's like it, some days it's not. But uh man, we came out, we got the we got some line wet. We only lost one Tokyo rig. Can't sit there and say I didn't see fish. All fish. We just could not get these little jokers to bite today. That's okay. Some days is like that. All right, let's get off the water and we'll do a little recap and on to the next fish. All right, guys, on the water closing. Today wasn't our day. Um, like I said, we forced it a little bit today, I think. Um, 100 degrees outside, 90 degree water. Um, we didn't go to a big lake, so I'm not too really upset about it. Um, but I thought we could definitely put a pattern together and at least come away um, with at least you know one one fish. But that's okay. Um, there will be a next time. I am actually happy that you know we kind of tuned in the hummingbird a little bit more. I saw what I needed to see as far as there. I made good casts. I definitely felt we threw the right base today. It just wasn't our day. Fish were being a little stubborn, that's okay. But we are done for today. Uh, if you guys like this video, please leave a comment. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube page. We got more content coming. You can also follow me on Instagram, Bewitz Gone Fishing as well. Uh, give me a follow there. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm done. It's hot. It's time for lunch. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.